Hello, everyone. This is the Mixed Months Podcast, episode 11, Valentine's Day edition. 11. I didn't just steal that. Um, uh, we're very excited. Shiv, actually, you want to introduce our guest? We have two uh, very exciting guests on. I think you don't. I think you don't know up. the name of our guest. <laughs> I don't, but that's you know. No offense okay. taken. No. Matthew Ward. I know you. I don't think I even asked your name. Yeah, that's okay. I, I can Matthew. introduce myself. I'm I'm happy to do that. Oh wait, let me introduce. I don't want anyone to have to introduce themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Sheehan. Nick Sheehan. <laughs> yeah, my name is Nick Sheehan. Nick Sheehan. I am Matt Ward, and I think you should know interview shows director. Okay. Um, so I'll be handling the camera work behind what soon will be a YouTube series. Woo! Okay, wait. Tell us more about that. What's going on? Whoa, whoa, no, no. Wait, is this a? Had them introduce themselves first. Before they just we introduce the themselves. Okay. But okay. he's also known, uh, and some people know him as Nikki Shoots on mm -hmm. Instagram. Mm. He's a great still photographer. Oh shoot! Okay, yeah. Nikki Shoots is that at Nikki Shoots? It is. Plug it. Plug uh, it. At Nikki Shoots with a period in between. Um, I shoot all film photography, um, predominantly landscape. Although I'm moving into the more street photography realm. Nice. Trying to get some of those candid, real shots of just New Yorkers. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I've been shooting film for a couple years now, and that's, you know, I've been doing that for a while, and now I'm just my creative juices are flowing, and I'm trying to do be a yes man and do new stuff and matt approached me with this uh the show idea so now i'm dipping my toe into the cinematography game lovely yeah. nice is that why you're moving to brooklyn soon too <laughs> exactly That's i'm trying to are. just fully All embrace that shit. <laughs> like graffiti you're like oh yeah this is my playground exactly this is my playground so we tell tell me what tell us what the likes. um because you guys are mentioning a show. Yeah, on what Saturday, show right? is yeah. this, so and how is it? What kind of show, and what where should we where can we watch it, and how? The show is called I Think You Should Know. I think um, you should know. Okay, it's best described. Our our producer Destiny described it as it's a talent show, and then afterwards you get to meet the talent. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna do an interview after, kind of like. Uh, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to see. You want to save the camera? Go. We'll I think you should save the camera. Yeah. So, uh, for everyone at home, they, our cats uh, kind of just uh, jumped. We were up. using one of the cat pods as a camera holder. They don't know what a cat pod. That's, that's and then very they fought inside, for the space. That's very inside James and Shivani world. Cat pods are our little cat couches, and uh, we were using it as a as a stand for one of the cameras. And the cats, of course, went up and, and uh, were had a little of, duel. Kind of molesting actually. It. They got um, excited about the show, I think. They're like, what is this? Yeah. You got your shot, Nick? I got the shot. You got the shot. <laughs> That's all that matters. Was that yes. running the whole, was that running? <laughs> it wasn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, Brooklyn. <laughs> set it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, all right, so let's kind of. So, okay, let's, let's talk go. show. Tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, talk show. I think you should know our first guest, comedian Jeff Wright. Okay. Uh, in 2019, he started doing some TikToks mm -hmm. out of Orlando. And then the executive producer, on late night, Mike Shoemaker saw them, offered him a writing job on late night. Oh, great. Wow. And now he's on tour and he's going to be our first guest. I think he's like kind of going to be the perfect guest. Yeah. And then he'll perform and then we'll interview him. I'm going to try to do my best, like Terry Gross, fresh air impression. Uh -huh. Maybe get into some Oprah territory. Right. Uh, but kind of like long form in conversation as opposed to like late night. Uh, we got to hit quickly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's, not, it's not corporate. Not corporate. It's not corporate. Yeah, we Grassroots. actually have no sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> no Yet. sponsor. Yet. It's a real thing. <laughs> but if SodaStream is listening. <laughs> SodaStream. Hey, listen. That's if great. You, if you're out there, I literally abuse your product, and I would love for a chance to abuse it live on our podcast. So hit me up, SodaStream. I'm ready to throw a whole bunch of bubbles in people's face. <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, that was a free plug for SodaStream. But no sponsors. This is a real show. This is a talk show. No and more free plugs, right? We have <laughs> no, no, that's we it. Have one, one, that's free that one, show, <laughs> one free plug a show. We did it early. <laughs> yeah. Real early. No. Um, but, okay, so it's a talk show, right? People can go and watch. People should come watch. Live audience. Live audience. Where is it located again? We're going to shoot in the East Village. East Village. Yeah. At a place special to you. It's a special place for me. It's a new gallery in East Village called All Street. Mm -hmm. um, it's 77 East 3rd Street between 1st and 2nd Ave. Um, yeah, this gallery popped up like mid or early last year. And I've actually had two gallery showings there for my photography. Ooh. Yeah. Um, one late last year and one earlier last year. And the owners are super nice, you know, young young guys. Um, and, yeah, so it's a great little spot. Matt actually came yeah. to my last pop-up for photography and was, you know, I think thinking about this idea in the back of his head. And so he saw the space and was like, this is perfect for what I'm planning. Yeah. yeah. Where, where are tickets available? 
At the door. At the door. At Can't the get them door. online. Got to, got to show up and buy them at the door. Modest five dollars. A modest five. Just to okay. pay save our up, venue. Save cool, up yeah. people. <laughs> nice. So um, I think that's a great idea. I, I think people really do get a kick out of uh, people performing and then kind of getting out of their performance and talking a little more, more real. Yeah. I've been doing some stuff. I'm a comedian too. If anyone didn't know, um, that was a joke for because people. <laughs> Know me and watch it, but oh, people know me. <laughs> I oh, hope so. It was but a joke. Comedians, um, I do things sometimes at the end of my shows. I'll do a Q and A, and sometimes that will be more fun than the, right. the set because people just like the, you know, everything's off the cuff and like unscripted, and like you know, you kind of get the really the audience kind of like gets to dictate, I guess, uh, what uh, what the content of the show is. What's your favorite question that you've been asked? Um, someone asked me. I remember this is this is really off, but someone asked me what kind of shampoo. Oh, I, I mean, use. look at your hair. I know, but I... I maybe, a lot of people have been asking me what my hair routine is. <laughs> I'd actually be curious to uh, but get I, the rundown on that. But I'd be a them. second plug tonight, a second sponsor. But I, I, I... Careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't name any names. But I told them it was uh, um, two and one, and then oh. they all booed me. Like, all, it was at a college, and they all just they started booed going, efficiency? They booed, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what? I, don't, I didn't know two and one was the devil's uh, uh, hair product. Jesus Christ. <laughs> So um, that wasn't my favorite question. That was just like a fun. Yeah, you reaction. remember that one? Yeah, right? I remember because I was just so thrown every day off. in the shower. Well, now, now, now I stopped getting two and one. I just <laughs> the other day I was like, you know what? Maybe I should I should switch it on me class. They got to you. They, they got, got to, to you. Me. These stupid college kids. Well, college was uh, having to shut them out too. Um, oh, it's free plugs over the show. Um, <laughs> God damn, what was it? It was in May. Hunter, Hunter College. Yeah, it was in May. No, Hunter College no. was was the the one that didn't accept me. Um, oh, Maine. It was Maine something, but uh, yeah. Man. They hurt my Kent, Kent State? Kent, no, not Kent. Kent, Kent State's in uh, Indiana. Or no, something. I don't know. Oh, we're okay. We're, we can no. stop plugging <laughs> colleges. Yeah. We have no I might not yeah. be done, but I'll try to stop This plugging. episode's going to get copyrighted. Stop um, by. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, oh, someone did ask me uh, what my like, favorite uh, joke was, mm. you know, and then um, it's fun. Because like, sometimes, um, I don't want to say this so I get material out of it, but sometimes some of the questions are very like uh, thought provoking. Right. You know, you start like uh, opening up a little bit. Um, but yeah, do you have anyone else besides comedians coming on the show? We want to do uh, as many musicians as possible. Okay. I think that Tell would be... Tell about your, your next guest idea. Well, I exciting. Yeah, next guest idea, but I don't know if I, I want to jinx it, but hopefully we have a great musical guest as guest number two. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, you can tell me after. Yeah, we'll tell you after. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Guess in the comments. <laughs> yeah, oh yes. No tag further clues. People, tag famous people in the comments. Guess the guest. Oh, lovely. This is Nimbo. Anyways. Yeah, Nimbo's trying to get He'll drunk. come by, you know. He he does like his IPAs. Um, but okay, what came what had you come up with this idea? Yeah. Well, I what think what struck you? I think I went to Nick's gallery show. Okay. Oh. And I thought this is a cool space. Uh it comes with a director. This guy can shoot. <laughs> package, <laughs> package deal. But I think it'll be exciting. You shoot stills and then you're going to shoot moving. Mm-hmm. And even though it's like a three camera, you know, talk show setup, Nick's going to get a little creative with it. Right. We're going to kind of do a fun monologue. Oh, fun. All Valentine's Day themed. Of course. Do you have Lovely. Any, do you have like a, an inspiration from another similar project? I mean, again... I mentioned Terry Gross already. Yeah, I'll yeah. mention her again. Yeah. I love her. I love her interviewing style. Right. And then um, who, this guy's canceled, but I, I also like Charlie Rose. Charlie Rose? I think he's a kind I can't of a, tell you who that is. Yeah. He's like a so, great, he had like, safe a, here. He had like a PBS <laughs> right. show. Yeah. Great interviewer. Uh, but. What a happened? Of, a lot of sexual I misconduct. Uh, yeah. sexual. I'll Classic. Do I'll do it. Classic. He just came back though and did a Warren Buffett interview. So I guess. Warren Buffett didn't get the news, or right. maybe he's too cheap to pay a publicist. He's very, you know, right, he, right, he, right. he eats McDonald's every day, and right, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, fair I think enough. Uh, when Matt was pitching me the show, he uh, mentioned his vision was like David Letterman's. My next guest needs no introduction. Oh, that's the Netflix. Is that the right. Netflix thing? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And and I had watched got the beard. So yeah, exactly. Ground, yeah, I had watched a couple of those uh, back when they came out and really liked them. And yeah. That's and right. So, that was kind of the original, but it was like maybe they do need an introduction. Yeah, exactly. But that wasn't great. Twist. That wasn't great, like talking to talent, like right, because they think anyway. So we kind of dropped <laughs> that pitch, but that was yeah. that was the beginning. But yeah. I like those styles where it's very casual, almost like a it's like a podcast basically, yeah. where there's like okay. it it feel- it's a little more than a podcast. You have a live audience, huh? No, no, no. But like the whole style, stylistically, yeah, yeah, there's so there's not it's right. not like like 
Like Letterman, when he would do the Tonight Show, it was very scripted segments, monologues, and like um, performance based, wacky music. This this is just two guys like literally talk. Like kind of when we saw Kumail, um, we saw Kumail and Johnny. He w- we saw a screening of Chippendales, his new show, mm-hmm. and he did like an. Uh, it was a podcast. It was a podcast, live podcast, yeah, recording, yeah. but it was a Q and A and like. Very, you know, intimate about childhood, about aspirations, about what he's trying to do with his career. Nothing steroids? too silly. He he. Um, he's in a different shape when we saw him last. <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah, he, oh, smaller. Yeah, he, he like very kinda, cut. He kind of he kind of shrunk off. a little bit. No, but he's still big. Have you well, seen yeah, the I Chippendale mean, show? No, I he, saw he, a couple episodes. He's supposed to play like a, a nerdy. Okay, well, Indian the camera guy. adds ten pounds. No, but he's like <laughs> you could see his like his his chesticles through the suit and everything. <laughs> his his arms do. I mean, it's so yeah. silly because he's supposed to be. There's a there's a in the beginning. He gets like he gets like harassed at like a a grocery store, and he's just sitting there taking it like mm-hmm. like a like a nerd, and he's like, dude, this guy can kick your ass. It's mm-hmm. just so it's a little it's a little silly, but. Um, but yeah, I like the, I, I can see the. Would you ever do stuff. Chippendales, James? Whatever. Uh, you mean the dancing, the yeah. actual Chippendales? Yeah. You yeah. know, for money. You know, the for money. money. Everybody's yeah. got a price. Everyone's got a price. That's right. Shivani, you clear that? Money. It's cool. Oh, absolutely. As yeah. long as I get a new Ferrari or exactly. something. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Right, like I, James, I you really got to put out for a Ferrari. <laughs> a Ferrari. Sorry, what color? Just so we get it all. I actually don't know my cars, but I. I heard that one's a fun one. Yeah, it's a like one. a midlife crisis one or something. Yeah. That'd be right? good for the Upper West Side. Just park it on 100th. <laughs> Have it slashed. <laughs> but uh, but um, yeah. So yeah, you should definitely do that. Um, but it's also great that you're, you know, biting the bullet, the two of you, and like actually getting something done. Because there's so many people out there who's like, I want to start a podcast. I want to do this. I want to do that. I've got like friends who are like, I think I'm going to start a podcast about this like brilliant idea. And I'm like, right. Wow, that is really brilliant. A lot of people will watch that. And you ha- you're the perfect person to do it yeah. based on your background and knowledge. And then nothing will ever happen. So very proud right. of you both for just like, well, doing, like starting the show. Your audience, your first audience, it might be five people. Yeah. But it'll be five. It'll be $25. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you got to start somewhere. And I'm just glad that you guys have fit. Yeah. Actually, doing it separates you. It already puts you ahead about 9% of people that have like these aspirations or dreams yeah, that's why i just tell getting people getting over the hump just showing up every day yeah. showing up with well, comedy too it's just like people are like oh how do you you know get to whatever it's it. like you just show up like you can't be thinking about every day like oh like is this what i'm gonna make is this when someone's gonna see me you just gotta just show up every day put in the work and uh yeah, make your own luck i think this first show is gonna be a big learning experience too oh <laughs> i think we've already it's already been a big learning but it's not, experience it, it's not supposed to be perfect like of course you, you yeah. try to try to do the best you can but you'll learn from it and like um those lessons you get from actually doing it you wouldn't you wouldn't get that from just sitting around being like worrying about if things are going to turn out okay totally. it's funny because yeah. i just i just did this gig at this new venue in uh in richmond virginia and i was talking uh-huh. to the owner of the club beautiful place and he goes yeah dude i had this the idea for this place and then like uh 22 months later I, I, I built the whole thing we opened and then, then he told me a really weird story about how he was uh in new york and he was talking to this girl he was dating and then like the, she had some weird idea about hiring a stripper and an ice cream truck oh and he was like oh that's fun let's do it and he just did it so i was like this guy's kind of a in a weird way i admire the guy because he if he wants something he just throws money yeah. at it and gets it done right. well he has the money to throw at it so but, let's, but, let's, but, let's number but, step one number one but i know i know but like <laughs> let's say you even, let's say you don't have the money or like um that's beside the point she's like actually like, you already have, paid for your iphone but there are people that have money that's still with like oh what if it doesn't work out or what if this what right. if that? or it's like the and shame they, they of like yeah the right. shame of messing up or something or like not this. the instant gratification of like oh this isn't that's blown true. up yeah i give up you know yeah, that's the it biggest takes time too yeah so it's just i i admire his uh you know his his uh just just Nike just do yeah, it. Let me get just that stripper it. on a on an ice cream pole. Has yeah. that happened yet? Yeah, he did it. He was trying oh. to sh- he was trying to show me a video of it. He couldn't find it. He's like, I swear it exists. I'm like, I'm sure it does. <laughs> okay. You don't have to <laughs> convince me of that. Um, you guys did it too. I mean, you did the podcast. How did you decide to do a podcast with your significant other? So the podcast really it, it started as like uh, it really it's it's I don't want to. Um, make it sound like it's a bigger thing than it is. It's really just like a couple's thing kind of at this point. We're, it's a, we Yeah, we just fun. wanted to do something together. Yeah. yeah. And we're like, what do we have in common? And like, <laughs> right. you know, 
we're mixed race. Let's talk about that. And honestly, we did maybe six episodes and got so bored of talking about a race. We're just talking about the same thing. So, <laughs> which, right. yeah. I think it was like a phase in the beginning was just like, oh, let's talk about our like identities growing up. And me, 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 me. And I know you're mixed race, so we uh-huh. could definitely talk about it if you want. But it's like there's so much more to a person than like, right. Right. than, you know, who like what race your parents were. And well, we also realized too a lot of the stuff that because, uh, you know, we have viewers and then we also share have a couple sketches we've done together uh-huh. so a lot of people that do view it they 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 kind of like our chemistry so we took a couple episodes just to do us two yeah. bantering bullshitting having a good time and then um so really it's just kind of like like you know i for me i was very like i guess anal about like we gotta have one every week and then that kind of went against why we do it we kind of just do it as a couple activity yeah. and we just have fun with it there shouldn't be any like uh, like uh Oh my god, we have a deadline. I kind of have that same outlook on photography. Like, yeah, a lot of people, especially having some of my first shows, were asking me, like, "Hey, do you want to do this as a profession, or are you trying to do this as a profession?" Yeah. And there was a while there where I thought I did, and first and foremost, photography could never support my lifestyle in New York. So uh-huh. <laughs> let's get that straight. But second off, you know, I I think the more you uh, stress about it and like you know, set, obviously you want to set goals for yourself, yeah. but I personally like keeping photography as a hobby. I think it right. keeps it a little more fun. It keeps it a little more relaxed. I think less I actually, stakes, less stakes. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of times I put out better work when I'm like, I'm just here to have fun. Like I'm yeah. walking the streets, I'm taking what I like. I don't, I'm not doing work for other people necessarily. I think it's still right. my own individualistic style. And well, when I started doing comedy, I didn't, I wasn't doing comedy my first five times. Thinking like, this is, I'm making money off this. This is it, man. Right. I'm, I'm six figures. Let's go. It was just like, oh, this is fun. Let me do this. Oh, then it became like, oh, I want to work on this joke. And then, oh, let me get more stage time. Let me, blah, 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 blah. And then it just became, and the sad part is now, like, now anytime I have an audition for a club or whatever, then it becomes not fun. Yeah. Like, then I'm not right. stressing. I'm like, oh my God, the owner's watching. And then, like, I get nervous. Like, that's when it's not fun at all. When there's their actual, there's an actual, like, uh, um, Am I repeating myself? When there's stakes yeah. involved, it's just yeah. like yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like that. It's like that Mike Birbiglia improv movie. You know where they're like all friends. Have you guys seen this? I have not. No. but they're like definitely plug it. What is it? Well, it's an old. I think it's called uh, Don't Think Twice. Doesn't need any help. Yeah, don't don't, <laughs> don't think don't think twice. Yeah, okay. we're plugging in a movie that came out four years ago. Um, yeah. It's a show about like all these improv people in New York, and like they're all they all kind of want to get on like the fictional SNL of yeah. the movie. I see. And then once someone gets it, like Keegan Michael Key is the character that gets it. Yeah. They all kind of like stop being friends effectively. I mean, there's more to it, but yeah. it's kind of like that. Like, oh, someone from SNL is watching this, oh, and they like man. took over. He like took over the improv. Oh, and like didn't let anyone else get a word in, blah blah blah. Yeah, and so gotcha. it is weird when that happens. Yeah. Well, even like um, I, I'm a you guys do you want do you have sports at all? Football, anything? Yeah. So I um, uh, who's your football team? Oakland Raiders, one okay. nation. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oakland. So Oakland, Oakland Raiders. Raiders. Not Las Vegas. Oakland. <laughs> Oakland so, Raiders. <laughs> I was listening to. Um, I did that subconsciously, actually. I will say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like honestly, I didn't flinch when you said it. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> but there was um. So for the, I'm not a Jets fan. I'm a Giants fan. But like, you know, I listen to this New York's radio, and like they started off the season like what, like seven and three, and they were, and then they mm-hmm. lost like the rest of their games. Yeah. And then like they were doing an interview with Sauce Gardner, and he's like, "Oh yeah, we just weren't like pl- having like as much fun as we had in the beginning." Right. And it's like once the playoff implications start coming, you know, people tense up. They start do perfect, and it's like. All you gotta do is do what got you there. You yeah, know, at that point, yeah. you know. If you already did seven and three. Yeah, you did it right. Just do what you're doing. You don't have to yeah. do anything, change anything up. You know, that's you know there, that that takes a certain type of a uh, person and mental um, um, outlook to like when things get a little more high stakes, when money starts getting involved, to kind of just be the same person. I feel like you know. Yeah. I will say it has been a lot of fun working on this show so far. So a little background. Yeah. Uh, Matt and I actually have history. Cool. <laughs> oh, um, tell me. Yeah, yeah. You two love birds. N- not as scandalous as uh, <laughs> the audience is probably hoping for, but <laughs> we actually grew up from, at least I moved in age three. We grew up across the street from each other. Oh, wow. Um, age three? On the, you on didn't the same even have street. memories yet. <laughs> Pretty That's much. True, huh? remember, just, I remember the first time I met Matt oh, and yeah. every memory Thank thereafter. You. Probably. Wow. <laughs> we, we can go with that narrative. Uh, so yeah, we grew up on the same street. Uh, we had two other friends our age mm-hmm. on the street. We would grow up playing football. Where'd uh, you grow up? Basketball in a small town called Arinda in the oh. East Bay. 
So kind of east of Berkeley, Oakland. Okay. okay. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Bay minutes. Area, East Bay. Bay. Area. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. I grew up in the Bay. Oh, right on. Yeah. Nice. Where at? Like Cupertino, so South okay. Bay. Yeah. Cupertino. What's the yeah. one ad on the Cupertino, radio? San Mateo, and Walnut Creek. Open <laughs> weeknights till 8, Saturday and Sunday till 5. Online at ShaneCo.com. Shane Co. Shane Co. <laughs> Shout out oh, Shane wow. Co. We're at four if there's Wow, counting. why did you Holy memorize shit. that? <laughs> that's like Bay Area... That's like Bay Area, a Bay Area fame right there. Oh, if really? you ever grew up listening to the radio in the Bay Area, um, that commercial was especially sports. I did like I did like that did like like yeah. light up a memory neuron it's in a, my brain. It's a jewelry store. Yeah. Now you have it's a friend like in the a, diamond everything. business. Everything. Right. Oh my god. So, yeah. So I actually, That's funny enough, I I wanted to wear. I have a shirt with mm. the whole <laughs> the whole saying. Oh wow. Towel, just a white tee, <laughs> That's and funny. I almost wore it. Uh, that would have been hilarious if I could just. <laughs> Pull it out right now, but Bay Area wow. represent how that came up organically. I think you should know. Show brought to you by Shane Go. <laughs> that could be our sponsor. Yeah. Now that the radio is just like defunct, basically, and nobody listens, yeah. they're probably looking for sponsors like <laughs> sponsor shows oh, like yeah. more radio. <laughs> radio killed the radio star. <laughs> So that's so cool. You guys uh, grew up to. I mean, yeah. that, like that's such a crazy. That that's a bond that like yeah. you know because I'm I'm friends with all my um, high school friends. Some of them from middle school, yeah. and um, yeah, it's like as I grow older, like I, I appreciate just that friendship more and more. I mean, there's just like you, it's just impossible to come by, you know. Yeah, and there's like a threshold. Like if you get into business together, you know, you have that like unspoken bond. You know where they that, live. You're not gonna. <laughs> you're not gonna fuck each other over. You know, you're not yeah. gonna like. You're not out here. To I know where your mom's is, buddy. <laughs> you know, you've got that familial like yeah. bond. Whereas, like, if you try yeah. to get into business with somebody who you like don't know, yeah. then you run the risk of them like having ulterior motives, and you don't know them that well. So this is like, this is such a sweet little thing. Let's not call I mean, it not business. A little thing. That's too much pressure yeah, on us. All of a sudden, we're going to be don't like Don't fuck each three. other over. Listen, young men. Uh, All right. If either of us have a problem, we'll go to Shivani first. That's right. Yeah, exactly. That's right. I'm, I'm your a, mother. A mediator. <laughs> <laughs> your mediator. Your mother. So that um, is so cool. It's so hard to find someone, too, that's like uh, like a, a partner. In terms of like uh, sure. any project, or we haven't done the first episode yet. Yeah, but we're right. gonna have yeah. ourselves. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, come it's on, it's gone well so far. <laughs> think, think big, come on, think big. You're putting all this effort already into like uh, put yeah. it, to get I, getting your show going. Yeah, I you will know. say it's 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 been cool. So I moved to New York City three years ago. Matt's mm-hmm. been here for maybe six, seven. seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but we kind of you know, I was living in San Francisco before. And maybe a year or two years in was like into my me living here in New York, we reconnected. Yeah. And like we haven't really hung out much in the last like five, six years. So it was cool to just reconnect, catch up and you know, fast forward a couple months and we're doing the show together and it's it's been great. Is nice. isn't it insane how those like childhood bonds like you can just pick up right where you left off sure for sure yeah. there's a friend of mine that i um have been hanging out with a lot more recently um who i went to high school with i hadn't seen her in 10 years wow and now i'm like at her house like every month mm-hmm. at least you know it's so awesome. it's so interesting how you can just like quickly easily reconnect with the people that you've like formed i went to yeah. my 10 year high school reunion Ooh. Ooh. Uh, and that was pretty crazy uh but they did a good job it was like a big turnout was nice. that a, was it at the school? Or was that a bar? Or like, or? They did it at a bar. I think they were okay. like, should we do it at like a ticketed thing? And someone's like, just make it casual. You know what's? Where did you go to high school? Uh, Miramonte. Miramonte. In Miramonte. Miramonte. I can't, that can't shout. I, every time you watch a movie about a reunion, it's always yeah. like at a, at, a, at the old high school or a big ballroom right. in the gymnasium. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it's not like that in real life. Like, <laughs> no, it's not. Sometimes I'll be I'll just be at a bar and I'll see see a hundred people and like high school reunion. I'm like, oh, yeah. this is. This just had a, just had a disgusting bar. Yeah. I thought it was more like glorified with balloons and, and punch. Like I don't know, but that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone for some reason from our high school or like even our town like is close too. Yeah. Like I, so everyone got it was like nice to see everyone, but I feel like people I've met in New York they're like I don't talk to my high school people I knew. Mm. I don't know. If that's just me. No. Yeah, I hear that all the time too. There's something that like I didn't understand either because yeah. I'm also you know but like well connected with my high school friends, um, and even like. A ton of them moved here too, <laughs> right? From the Bay Area, mm-hmm. so that's like, there's like 20 of them here. It's insane. Yeah, but what it's, is that? It's hard to it's 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 meeting up with people in New York is is not as easy as it sounds. 
Like anytime someone's in town, oh, we gotta hang out, and I'm just like, you don't know how. No, we're staying Brooklyn, like. But you don't we're know saying is like we. Uh, I can't imagine a world where I like I right. didn't hang oh, out didn't. with my high school friends anymore. Oh yeah. I, I hang out with more high school friends than I do like college friends. Well, people want to get a, people. Some people go to high school and they don't have a good time and they just want to like true. run away that's from true. the childhood. That's true. You know, that's very common. I used to do a that's podcast nice. where I would interview someone about high school mm-hmm. every week. I've done like I did like over 150 episodes, and yeah. I would say. A good, like 60 70 percent were like i don't i don't talk to anyone like i yeah. I, I gotta I had to get out like they'll uh, like bring I the wanna, yearbook out and everything they'll be like oh this happened themselves. that happened this yeah. note that note this yeah. teacher they and then they'll crying. be like oh i don't talk to anybody yeah but they'll but they'll, <laughs> so they'll read it and they'll you could tell they're kind of like oh like it wasn't as bad as i thought because all those like right. kit you know keep like you know summer goodbye like things are very uh very heartwarming what is kit you know? yeah KIT is keep in touch. Oh, keep, keep in, touch. in touch. Keep in touch. KIT. Yeah. Like hags, have a good summer. Hags, have a good summer. Yeah. That's, That's kind of the path thing. I figured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> have that too on the, he grew up on the East Coast. Okay. Oh, hags and KIT? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. KIT, hags. Are they, they're throwing balls at us? He's throwing balls. These cats, look at that. These cats are savages. I just, okay. <laughs> Hide the balls. But yeah, um. Yeah, so that podcast was so. Let me, can, can I can I can I put you on the spot here a little bit? So you're gonna do the interview, and um, can we can we see like pretend like Shivani's on the podcast? Mm-hmm. Let's get some interview going. I want to see. Yes, kind of I'm hilarious. <laughs> Sneak peek. <laughs> if Shivani was a guest on the on the show, how would this go, go ahead? Yeah, yeah, we got <laughs> this is this thing. is your practice round. I want to see the practice. Yeah. Where did it all go? No. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it all go to shit? Where did it all go south? Why? Why'd you? Where'd you hit rock bottom and decide I need to become a comedian? <laughs> I do think I asked. I did the pre-interview and I was like, "Can I ask about your family?" You know, I think it's okay. like tricky. And I, but I think everyone can like relate to family and whoever they had and like their support system. So I think that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. And like every time someone gets up there and accepts an award, they thank their mom and dad or somebody. Boring. Yeah, yeah boring. Mom, I love you, dad. <laughs> what's 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 Larry David's speech? He says if he ever wins an Oscar, he's like, uh, kids shouldn't be on planes. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good speech. Yeah, that's a good. That's too true. I agree. But yeah, I, I think it'll be kind of cool to to be in conversation with Jeff, right? And to really kind of bring it down to this level, and and ask him. I think it's also interesting, like where he came from, coming from. I don't know where he came from in terms of nothing, but like he came doing TikToks. Yeah. And yeah. now he's on tour and now he's on Seth Meyers. So I think the yeah. come up story everyone loves and it's also kind of inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's like the um, American dream now. It's just like you go viral and then next thing you know, you have a million followers and then like you have an agent and then. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's especially up. if it's like all you have is like a cell phone and nothing. Like that's right. the most, it's amazing. Those yeah. are the anybody most interesting. Be, can become famous like very quickly. Yeah. Makes, yeah. yeah. yeah it so makes now a, everybody kind of has that like dream. Um, Oh, I can be. And, I yeah. do famous, and it makes too. the dream more democratic in a way. For you sure. know? Like anyone can do it. There's no barrier. No barrier. Yeah. yeah. Much lower barrier to entry these days. Should yeah. there be a barrier? No. <laughs> <laughs> there shouldn't. Be. It is. It is well, a little. I mean, as long as you're not spewing hate, there, that <laughs> should be the only barrier. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't don't like start hating on I mean, anybody. I think especially in the uh, music industry too. I mean, similar. I'm sure in, in comedy as well. But uh, I've got uh, a close friend whose younger brother. Um, put a song on TikTok and now is like signed with Atlantic Records yeah. and like yeah. touring the nation within maybe a, two years of putting that song out. It's it's literally TikTok. like, I don't know the song, but I'm, I'm sure it's a great song, but it's like, it's literally with these agencies, it's literally about your following. So mm-hmm. I'm sure you got like 500,000 followers and like yeah. the moment you come to them with that, they're like, yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. So that, I always say it's like for artists, it's like our um, baseball card, the, these following numbers, uh-huh. you know? And it's like, if you have these impressive numbers, like people are going to want to, you know, sign you. Mm-hmm. Growing up, we yeah. used to trade baseball cards a lot. Big time. It was fun. Yeah. I still have them. I, I love them. I, I used to like put them out on the floor and I would like make little teams up with the cards. Yeah. I think have to work you had a money. sweet room, like full of sports memorabilia. I, know, I can't believe my parents oh, so let me cool. do that. Oh my God. That's dope. Do you guys remember Sports Illustrated for kids? Yeah. When they had the, 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 the trading card section, you would rip out and then right. pull them off. Dude, that was shit. We used to actually... Uh, write letters to professional players yeah and, that's, and kids. And that's when they would read them yeah. yeah include a card and be like a return envelope and everything yeah and try to get an autograph card we got a couple sometimes they would you sign did? oh yeah for sure yeah they used to, that's how it used to be before. i mean lost and a it, fair know. amount of baseball cards <laughs> in the process yeah, yeah, but yeah. you get, a risk. You, you yeah, get yeah, that yeah. one in, in 20 back and it makes it all worth it you have yeah. to decide like do we want to risk losing this yeah, i know 
it's a, it's a gamble. It's always a gamble. You forget with the new age, you know, with email and and, and DMs and right. stuff. Like people still do that. Like the owner of the Giants, he like he's he still answers back fan mail. Like yeah. he'll who's like, this? The John Mara. Oh, John. Yeah, like he says he's still like he, he you know they mail him and yeah. then he'll if they write to him he'll write him back just like whatever thank you for you know being a fan but it's it's really old. School. I always thought that was interesting. Like we found some website, some like yeah. low budget. HTML, HTTP. yeah, yeah, yeah. HTTP no ass <laughs> website, and it just had all these famous athletes' addresses. Oh yeah. sure, and they like, were this like is yeah, looking but... back like is this guy a stalker? Like how it's what like is going maps, on? I guess. That's gone now. Is that still around? The know. website? Yeah, it's no idea. Yeah, because I remember no my idea. um talk about yearbooks. Like uh, we would yeah. get these uh, directories every year, right? Yeah, and it right. would have everyone's phone number and address in them. I'm oh like, my you god, can't, you can't do that now. <laughs> I mean, that would be bad news. I I lived on this street called Bub Road. Oh, Bub. Yeah. That's B U B B. Hey, Bub is a sweet name. Yeah, and then in the third grade, like you know, this is back when there were no like cell phones or anything. Like we got a house call from like this girl that lives. I mean, that lived this girl that was in my year, mm-hmm. a third grader, and she called and then my mom's like, it's for you. And then I like said hello. And she's like, hey, Shivani, um, did you know that you live on Bub Road? <laughs> 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 like, Ca- Captain yeah. Obvious over here. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it would you'd be yeah. just like send yeah. directories out to all yeah. the parents home and all the kids. And, I mean, home yeah. phones. Yeah. yeah. They could just call you up and be like, do you live here? <laughs> what is this place? Do you guys just leave your doors unlocked, front doors? My front door would be open as a growing up. Just like, wide open. In oh like back growing home, up, growing up, yeah, 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 not now. I, don't know, I feel like home. across the street from me, it was always open. Uh, yeah, the McCall- yeah, <laughs> they were, yeah. I don't know. My mom was always a little uh, oh. like freaky, like okay, uh, like freaked out. So she would always lock up. But, okay, okay, okay. But my roommate today in New York City leaves our door unlocked all the time. Oh, that's not which a, is another not, story. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jay, Lori, James uh, is Lori very side? anti. Yeah, what? James is very anti. What, Lori side? No, like, like. Leaving you know, the leaving the yeah. like. Well, I'm gonna send my roommate the this recording after this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I hope he listens to, all the way through to this point. Think yeah. you're shitting on him. <laughs> Up yours, roommate. <laughs> he knows. He knows. He gets it like once a week. I know, but me and James di- like differ a little bit. I'm not. I'm not like let's leave our door unlocked indefinitely. But I'll be like, you know what? If I'm going to put mail in the mailbox down the street and then come sure. back. I'll leave the door unlocked. Or if I'm going to go to the grocery store, pick up a couple things, mm. I'll leave the door unlocked to come right back. Yeah, like, there's two guard cats anyway. Yeah, yeah we've got two cats. They'll, uh, <laughs> they'll make someone fall they'll, in love. They'll escape. They'll watch out. <laughs> they'll be like, finally, freedom. Someone yeah. open the door and let us out. Um, but yeah, you're. he's very anti. He's like, if I'm I mean, just like York, that's why. going yeah. downstairs to do laundry, I got to no, lock the I, door. When I'm back home in Jersey, if I have to go run an errand down the street, I don't lock the. I, I just go from the back door. I don't lock it. Like if it's only for if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do that, See, yeah. a back door, you're pussy. Huh? Just go out the front door. <laughs> that's that's come on. You, that's where pussies come from. The back door. Um, <laughs> I just leave the back door. Pussy. <laughs> Um, weenie. <laughs> no, but I mean, dude, I I just threw out my bike. I had a bike that was just um, oh. I just put it out there, and like I literally, I remember, I went down to take out the trash. I went up, took down more trash. Gone immediately. It was well, like eleven it was, minutes. It was uh, intentional. We wanted to get rid. of We wanted bike. to get rid of it. Yeah. But but yeah. still, someone like in eleven minutes, someone's like, we're not stupid. I promise. <laughs> I, I put out. <laughs> not a, stupid. I put out an AC unit. I was like moving out, and it was gone in an hour. Yeah. People, oh no. I mean, I was. I was. No, no, no. He was oh, okay, okay. Still, okay, okay. people yeah. will pick. Unless that yeah. reversal, you're like, yeah. you, 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 you just do what they did. You're an idiot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't. How could you do it to yourself? Backdoor pussy. Victim blame. Uh, <laughs> pivot to a quick story, but about okay. uh, yeah, tell us. getting robbed. I guess. Oh, oh no. Oh, is this, tell is this us. at the apartment? No, this was this was not. Uh, no, oh. this is reason to lock. If this has happened at my apartment, he would not be leaving the door unlocked anymore. We're just still waiting for that first time. What's your That's address for everyone? Uh, okay. No. <laughs> uh, so I was in Denver, Colorado during the pandemic. I just moved to New York City, stuck around for a little bit. Obviously, uh, this was not the place to be. So I went to Denver, Colorado, where my older brother lives. Mm-hmm. And that was really where I started like a lot of my photography um, was during the pandemic and in Colorado. Like, like taking photos of like lots of old cars, which Denver was had a bunch of them. But anyway, so I was uh, I was riding my brother's bike around town um, and I had leaned the bike against a pole and maybe was seven feet away from it tops. I was taking a photo of like this movie theater or something like up in the air. Huh. So I was looking through the viewfinder for all of six seconds, maybe. And so I put the camera down, look back to go back to the bike and it's gone. 
And so I looked the other way and the homeless person had had swooped it and was like riding slowly away. Slowly. <laughs> slowly away. Slowly. Just well, to show off. <laughs> I mean, I think it was just a home. Yeah, I don't know. But I. <laughs> He's on crack. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he wasn't very <laughs> fit. Mile high. Let's put it that way. Mile high. Get it? <laughs> no one? I'm a comedian. All right. All right. Bingo. All right. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. Good. You're not a comedian. Come on. Yeah. It's pretty good. Even the least she so, yeah. My immediate reaction was to yell at him, which in hindsight, you know, I could have gone stealthily and maybe caught up to his slow ass, but. I yelled at him, and he saw me running after him, so he kicked it into high gear. Oh, Took damn. one turn, and then it was like downtown Denver, which is, you know, there's like Tent City uh, on this one That's, block. Yeah. So if you were to do it again, you would have went stealth mode on them? Oh, yeah. I would have I would have chased his truck chased stick? him down and just pulled him, probably. Yeah, truck stick. Yeah, right. when, when Took his oh, crack, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this isn't good for you. <laughs> Get a job. More for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's tough, man. I mean, it, it's so. Yeah, Nick's anti-homeless, by the way. I just, yeah. just want to set that. Oh, straight. Yeah. It's, you know what? It's New called place Nick. To live it's in. called the unhoused. <laughs> no, <laughs> canceled. Um, he doesn't vote for right. any of the programs. It's right. really bad. We've been, we've been right. working right. on it, but. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. It, it, uh, in public, you, do you do you think twice about saying homeless now? Uh, no, James. You know? I think twice sometimes. Do just you? say homeless. Do you think about when I'm on stage, I, I double think well, homeless sometimes. What do you say? I say homeless, but I, there's, there's like, it's I'm bracing myself for someone to be like, excuse me. Like, I'm, I'm a little, I guess yeah. ev- everyone has a home. Is that what it is? Is that the nice thing to think? I don't know. Is, no, un- it's is like, unhoused the, the PC term? That's the for PC it? term. Oh, yeah. PC term, oh, unhoused. Yeah. Unhoused. Yeah. It's so, the same thing. It's the same number of syllables. No house. That's what it is. Mm, home same is, number of syllables. Home carries more than house. Without home. I, I think unhoused know. sounds more temporary, maybe. Yes. Like, mm. oh, I'm currently unhoused, but yeah. but homeless, it's like, oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, permanence. That I don't know. Getting, yeah, I mean, that's. We'll, that's, we'll, that's we'll edit good... in post. Can we just do a voiceover? Unhoused. <laughs> right. <for> that story. Unhoused. <laughs> yes. uh, no. Yeah, robotic. Uh, well, Me and James I, are I wondering. Was, before New York, I was uh, in San Francisco and um, walked through the Tenderloin, which you're. you're oh, there. boy, do I have every, a Tenderloin story yeah. for you. <laughs> every day to and from work. So I'm. I'm yeah, I, I'm pretty. Uh, I've seen it. I've seen the worst of it. I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty familiar uh, with unhoused. In it's high school, oh god, this is a bad story. I'm gonna get canceled. I don't know, just for my lack of human being. But um, <laughs> and when I was a senior in high school, I had already gone into college. It was like April senior year, second semester senior year. My friends and I went to a concert in San Francisco, and I guess they parked somewhere somewhere near the tenderloin Mm -hmm. and i like on the way there like there was a handle in the car and i don't remember anything but i definitely chugged it and and i like totally blacked out Uh. (laughs) and i don't in the tenderloin yes and so my friends actually we were they were trying this is their story not mine because i don't remember um but what they told me is they're trying to get into the concert venue they didn't let them get in because i was too drunk yes because of me and I don't do this. That was the only time this has ever happened. I probably, I'm not this person anymore. I'm not this person. It happened one time. But um, they were trying to get back to their car and they like forgot where they parked to like get me back. And right. they walked right through the tenderloin. And then apparently like a cop car like stopped by them. Well, apparently like, there was like guys being like, yo, you want some, uh, yeah. you want some drugs? You know, young children. Um, but then like apparently the, idea, like, the big overcoat instead of yeah, they've got the coat. It's really organized. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. I would buy just out of respect. Here you got your cocaine. Here you got your, your cannabis. Yeah. If you're if you're feeling like a lighter night, but um, <laughs> prescribing. Yeah. yeah. Those are doctors, right? Look you, you just... up and down. Oh, I got what you need. I could tell. I just assessed you. <laughs> I think you'd fit in uh, this category right here. Um, some red wine. Um, but apparently a cop car stopped them, us, I guess, and cursed out my friends and like, what are you doing walking around the tenderloin with like a half naked girl? Granted, right. I was wearing like a crop top. I wasn't half naked. I was a quarter. Naked. When was this? This was, I was in high school, 18. Oh, so this is 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. This is like God. 2012. <laughs> And they cursed my friends out. Like, the cops cursed them out for, for them. like, even being in the Tenderloin. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, hearing this story, I was like, oh, thanks for... Uh... Is that, like, the Skid Row of San Francisco, I guess? Is it? I, yeah. I can't yeah. remember. 
is it? <laughs> <can't>. You would know. <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's a very rough, probably the roughest area in San Francisco. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Or the most concentrated area. What's yeah. the nicest area in San Francisco? You think probably like the Marina, Presidio Heights. Heights. Where Neva Presidio Heights is pretty nice. Or, or excuse me, Pacific Heights. Oh, okay. Pacific Which Heights. Is, yeah, I've heard Heights. of that. Pac there, what's the, what, nice. what about the Village one? Greenwich Village in uh, what would that be? Francisco. Yeah, that's Los where, Altos. That's where Los Altos. Oh, I mean that's South that's Bay. Yeah. That's South Bay. No, you're talking about in San Francisco. Pacific it's- Heights, Knob Hill, Marina are, are pretty nice. Um, but then, I mean, San Francisco is like, there's all sorts of different types of neighborhoods, right. right? Like, you can get out towards the Pacific further, and there's like really nice, you know, suburb, more more suburban neighborhoods yeah. with like homes and stuff. But You can see that New York Times hit piece on San Francisco. Uh-uh. No, tell me. It was like downtown San Francisco is the deadest city in America. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> And it's like obviously New York's like more better than San Francisco, but they didn't they didn't go to any of these other areas. And yeah. I, I thought it was a total hit piece from the East Coast. Wow, dude. I didn't like it. The East versus West rivalry. I think they is put back. it on the front page. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Cla- yeah. That's New York such a cap- classic. Yeah. New York. San Francisco attitude. Chronicle needs to clap yeah. back. Clap back. <laughs> Seriously. Small, we're, that- we're waiting for the rebuttal. <laughs> yeah, still waiting. Yeah, come on. That Carl's insane. I can't believe it's a real real thing. Carl? Carl the Fog. Yeah, I couldn't believe I like I seen it on TV. I <laughs> Who's seen Carl? Perry. I knew. Who's Carl? Yeah. I don't he, know. He's the, the fog. The, yeah. Is it smog or fog? Fog, fog in San Francisco, fog in L- or smog in LA. Right. Yeah, mm. there's a there's like just a fog that just hangs out all yeah. all, all yeah. the time. And it's I thought cold. it was like I thought it was an exaggeration, but it's, it's cold like, all the time. Yeah. Summer, winter, it doesn't matter. It is cold. Always a puffer in San Francisco. Yeah, what's always the, a puffer. Yeah. What's the Mark Twain co- uh, quote? The Oh yeah. The uh coldest <clears throat> The, the the coldest winter, winter was a summer in San Francisco. Yeah. And then, um, I, well, have you guys seen that thing where it's like, if you saw something on TikTok, just say you saw it in the New York Times? No, I have not heard no. that, but I can imagine someone saying that. Anyway, I saw something on the New York Times. <laughs> okay, yeah. tell us. And it was like, it was like the... <laughs> the I see ho- what you did there. <laughs> the hottest summer in New York is a, is a winter in a pre-war building with... Uh, one of those heaters. Yeah. With the ones that we have? Yeah. <laughs> I have one of those, too. Conduction Because you, you can't control them. These, oh, no, no. These turn on whenever. no, we don't We don't get to control them. Who heat. controls that? Is that the land? Central I, heat. I think it's right? the building. Yeah. Is it? it just the knows? Landlord? I don't know. It, no, it doesn't know because sometimes it'll be one degrees and it won't be on. And then sometimes it'll be 50 and it'll just turn on. So yeah. it doesn't There's know. just one guy in New York that controls all <laughs> of central <laughs> heat. And he's really cold. <laughs> he's, just, he's just high. He's pushing yeah. the buttons. Oh, feels, sometimes we're cooking, man. <laughs> Dude, it's bad. We're ba- cooking. I think it's like, um, Do a little Bikram. <laughs> yeah, a little Bikram. I don't think it's good for you because like, I think with the rust or whatever, yeah. I, yeah. I sleep right by my face is right next to it and I wake up my my, my throat is uh scratchy. Do you know, like wake up and just like stuff. start coughing? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah just... Well yeah, I always smoke a cigarette in bed, but <laughs> you know, that's that, that can't, can't be, be why. Yeah. No. <laughs> Never smoke in bed. Yeah. Uh, um my heater is like makes the most noise whenever I turn it on. Do you have like when you can it, turn like, yours on? Like it kicks. I, I actually oh, do no. not have central heat. I have control Fancy. over my heat, but oh, it is man. Sounds like somebody's in my walls, like banging a, a pipe against mm. pipes. Maybe that's how it works. Dave. Ours does that when that pole yeah. makes it a lot. It makes a lot of noise yeah. over there. We want a new. But we want to live in a building that has a central air, slick countertops, like none of this pre-war war we shit. We want to We're live in it. a building that we can't afford. We don't want a chimney. Sure. We don't want a fireplace. Does that work? No, it's not working, but it's beautiful. No, it's <laughs> it's silly, dude. Um, I think didn't Ellie go up it once? Or at the last building, what are you like talking she, about? reverse Santa. Yeah. Oh, oh, the chimney. Yeah, yeah. just went up. <laughs> just, just. That's the first thing she did. Like we let her in. We're like, look, it's a new home. And the first thing she, she did. I don't like this place. She's like had a vendetta for escaping for a long time. Like anytime we like open the door, she'll be like, she'll tr- escape and go as many flights up as possible. Did you guys ever put her on a leash? Yeah, we put her on a leash. Like if we're taking her out, do the you dolly know? thing, walking to the. Yeah, seat. sometimes we take our cats to the park. Really? really? Yesterday, yeah, yeah, we, oh, we, nice. we took really them to the cool. park yesterday. Yeah, I feel like most cats aren't down for that. <laughs> they're not down. They they kind of no, they are. They they're very curious. Uh, no, very, they are. They're, they're not. They're not aggressive. They don't go out and wander. They kind of like pick, poke their head out, and they're like. Get no, out it's sit, a no, right. no. He, you're wrong. It's a time thing. It's like for the first five, ten minutes, they're just yeah. like in the carriers. They're like, let's go. Carriers. Oh, that's yeah. nice. You transition them. Yeah. No, yeah. we just like open the carrier and we let them yeah. just sit there, and we'll then they just time. sit there for a while, and then they'll like creep out, and that's when we have to put the harness on. I think that should be normalized because cats don't do their business on the street. They'll do it back at home. We. I love. I think it's so easy, and it's it, this apartment. You know, it's New York. It's so small. Yeah. I think that it. You know, the new and 
enriching the environment of your pets <laughs> neurologically will make them last longer. They will like produce more connections in their brain. And this They'll is coming from fulfilled. a. Neuroscience PhD student. Whoa, better believe <laughs> it. Better believe it. I read on TikTok once. Um, <laughs> New York Times. New York Times. Times. <laughs> New York Times. Um, Washington Post. It's not in my own Times. research <laughs> of memory. I would actually do research on memory. Oh. Yeah, um, in mice. But it's still the same thing. It's like when you enrich their environment, you can like, if a mouse has like, like a genetic disease that makes them have like memory deficits yeah. or if they're like um, had a traumatic experience that shrinks their like memory region. If you give them an enriched environment, like give them as many toys and fun stuff right. as possible, then they like end up recovering pretty well. So spoil them. Yeah. So spoil, them. <laughs> spoil, Make them. Happy. just like introduce them to new things and new experiences. And like, you know, these cats are curious. So they end yeah. up being happy anyways. And then they'll last longer because they'll be just like happier and less stress and less. Also, the, I think the monotony of like just this apartment and stuff, I think it could probably get, they can get just bored. Right. Yeah. Sure. So we take out oh, our cats. So crazy. It's a thing we do. We take our cats That's on nice. walks. We take them to the park. Take them on planes. I would love to see more cats just walking down like the street. Bodega cats are the shit, man. You ever see <laughs> a bodega cat? Cats? A bodega cat? Yeah, they're Dude, they're so. I got respect for the them. Shit. Like, yeah, tougher than me. I saw a Home Depot cat once oh, in Queens. Great. Sick. That cat has got to have the best life. Yeah, so a much Home space. Depot cat. Yeah, multiple levels, plant oh, yeah. section, all sorts of shapes and sizes of furniture. <laughs> the most enormous wow. playground. Yeah, mm. I would love a Craigslist ad for a cat walker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was, well, we'll be the one to post it first. <laughs> but yeah, that's, a, that's what we try to do. We took them to Puerto Rico with us. No way. Yeah, no. we took about a five-day trip to Puerto Rico. They no. loved wow. it. They had so much fun. They were so happy. They went to the beach? Like we, well, we didn't take but, them onto the beach because we're, I don't know. Like I'm scared that they'll think like the sand is a litter box. Right. Um, but we, had, we did take them poolside. Poolside, yes. Like poolside. So Got just, him on Mai Tai. No, what's the drink? We did. Rico? What's the- Pina Colada. Pina Colada, Pina Colada yeah, yeah. originated. Okay. <laughs> yeah, rum. I gave him a mudslide. <laughs> <laughs> it was dope. They're very happy in new situations. How was traveling with your pet? Oh, so, okay. So I think our cats are a little weird. They love airplanes. Oh. They yeah. have the best time in airplanes. They just sleep and they're like happy the whole time. We also flew first class. <laughs> <laughs> we also flew first class. <laughs> James had so many miles. So we ended up flying. We actually did end up flying first class. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, we only flew. We, so we. we <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. You're going to like 38C and you see this cat in Delta One or something. Yeah. With their what is my seat? life? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we've done both. Played a tuna like already in front of them. <laughs> have a little bib. <laughs> We've we've flown them both. And look, the yeah. cat just meows. At him. I need to reconsider <laughs> my life. We've flown Aww, them. Give him the back. <laughs> yeah, we've flown them in economy, and we've flown them in first class before. And here's the difference: in economy, they're like you know you can't even open the carrier because that when in, in the plane they're very tame. They just sit near us and they don't go anywhere. Um, but in economy, they'll be like, put your fucking cat away, put him back in the carrier, put him oh, under the seat in front of you. Yeah. But in first class, you can have him out. Classist. You can just like oh, yeah. have him hanging around and that they say nothing. They even praise you for it. They're like, uh, oh, what beautiful, wonderful cats yeah. you have. And they're like, thank you. Give me another mimosa. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> it really is great. Yeah. If you're ever down on yourself, just fly first class, huh? You just get, I mean, yeah, you just it's, lose your it's, uh, a month of rent. They really treat you differently. It's pretty, it's pretty alarming. It is alarming oh, how different the yeah get the, the treatment is. You get the board it's first. Wild. You get everything. Um, you guy. ever flown first class? I have not. Never. I'm surprised. Never. I, I just got upgraded, uh, yeah. and I and I did it. I wasn't expecting it. Mm. But I, I was meeting my parents in Hawaii. Oh, that's a good one. And there's oh. a flight from JFK to Honolulu that goes straight. Yeah. Wow. It's 11 hours. And so I booked my little economy ticket, but I'm loyal to Delta. There we go. That's what is that, fifth All plug? Right. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Sorry, I know we weren't going to. And so They and should sponsor us. Yeah Delta, yeah, Delta One is nice. Oh, I know. I can't oh, imagine. you flew Delta One? The beds and everything. I keep seeing the ads for it online, yeah. and I'm like, I wonder what the fuck that is. I haven't flown since, and it's going to be hard to do it again, but it was nice. I feel like if I was in a plane like that, 
and we got to the destination, I would just be like, <laughs> let's just take a couple laps. I'm I'm enjoying myself. Yo, dude, that I got the, movies. That is part of the trip. When you're flying first class, that is yeah, that is part right. of the trip. My yeah. flight's on, my phone's on airplane mode. Nobody can bother me. I'm yeah. just true. I don't want to get that's on the best part. Term, yeah. Life has paused. <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> Luxury with your plane on with your phone on airplane mode is the best one. Yeah. Did you have the reclining seats? Full. It's a bed. <gasps> Delta wants yeah. a bed. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> like, oh my God! You slept on Nick, a plane. Yeah, Nick, you're right though. Like, I had to keep my phone off. You can do the free messaging Wi-Fi, but it's the one chance to kind of be aware. No, I, I love that. I love that. You know I what, turn my phone off all the time. You can't, but even with the Wi-Fi, it's never good. In general, so you're, so you're like yeah. fighting with it. You're like yeah. fighting with just it to stay, stay off, on. It, huh? Yeah, it's just too stressful. You know, it's one thing. Also, yeah, like you said, it's a good excuse to not text people. You know. <laughs> oh. Oh, I can't. No, that, can't I went to. Communicate. I was at a friend's giving. We only communicate on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This, uh, this, we sat down in the, er, in the early episodes. I'm like, you are forced to sit down and listen to the words I say for an hour because there's cameras watching. We, we haven't talked since December since we last oh. talked. This <laughs> but yeah. I was going to spin it positively and say, how yeah. beautiful is that, though? Oh. Uh. <laughs> uh, I went to a friend's giving, a different one, where I like left. I guess like we all threw our jackets in like my friend's room. And I left my phone in the jacket pocket mm-hmm. and like just didn't see it the entire night until it was close to leaving. That's nice. Ooh. And I was like, oh, let me check. Like my friend was like, oh, like I was, I met somebody else. I was like, Let, let's get our numbers and whatever. Yeah. And I went to get my phone and I was like, it's in the other room. It's in my jacket pocket. And they're like, <laughs> you, you haven't had your phone for three hours. There was, they were like Shocked. flabbergasted. Yeah. die. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> Heart attacks, um, but yeah, I was like, Wait, "Do you not?" You know what's crazy about that? Because it's, <laughs> it's it's bliss. Mm-hmm. It's like it's bliss. After the first, because I went to the Middle East um, last summer for two weeks, and the phone service was terrible. So I, you just don't have a phone really. Get me music yeah. maybe, but um, the first few days you are a bit squirrely. Like, oh, who's emailing? Who's texting? Who's calling? Oh my god, I can't. Oh my god. And after a couple of days, I think there's that. Once you get that initial phase, and then you're like, oh, "I'm still alive," right? You you actually feel way better. Than when you do have a phone, mm-hmm. it's it's weird because you think that? Yeah. you think with all you know the luxuries of, of communication, and internet, and all the stuff, you'd be happier, but you're not. Like I, I have a way question. Yeah. I have a question. I had a friend who I have a friend who went on a two week retreat where there were no phones, no technology, mm. and he just did yoga and book reading. All I would day. do that. <laughs> would you do it? Yeah. Could you do it? I wouldn't do it. What about you, I'm just Nick? Gonna say I'm not a big yoga. Guy, fair enough. Um, yeah, what would you substitute? That's yoga a big for? part of the two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think no, but it was. Uh, one but of those no, things. I mean, if it was like my favorite activities, uh, in exchange for not having a phone, okay. yeah, I think so. I would do I that, that if it cool. was like volleyball. I mean, I I know you. Right. Yes, I know you through like a mutual friend who plays volleyball. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, if it was just volleyball yeah. for two weeks and no phones, I could absolutely hundred percent. I think I would it. like to be mm. moving locations though. I okay. think it would be easier if I was like traveling. Obviously, you need your phone to travel for the most part, but like, I don't know, being in one one little resort thing yeah. for two weeks, I think phone or no phone, I may go. A well, you crazy. know what happens? <laughs> the, the days start blurring together. You uh-huh. don't. You start to lose a track of what day of the week it is, and then it's like the same people, same surroundings, everything, and that that can kind of get you a little me- messed up in the head. That's why um, when I when I went out for the two weeks in the Middle East, I was in, I was in military bases, mm-hmm. and I was losing tracks of the days of the week and all this stuff. And it was weird when I got back home. I was like. It's so like hack to say, but I was like depressed. Yeah. Because you know everything just becomes regulated again. You're oh, it's performing. On the yeah, basis? I, was, I was performing. Yeah. Well, that's cool. But, no better feeling than that, I bet. No, it was. Yeah, it was for great. the troops. Yeah, for the oh, troops. Yeah. Hope. Yeah. No, it was one. It's just like uh, not only am I doing the thing I love, but I'm doing it for like a reason, and then like they're all super grateful, and then just I mean I'm just seeing things that most people would never see, like being in military bases and um, camels. Camels, yeah, <laughs> but like just secret locations. Actual camels. Yeah, how, literally, actually, how many humps did you see? Um, uh, it was just, there was one eight. Two, yeah, one had eight ten, humps. Ten humps? Oh, you mean camels? Yeah, sorry. Yes, oh, I saw like, uh, just, what, what were you were talking you, about? You, what kind of humps were you? <laughs> oh, they meant the humps on the camels. Because yes. there could be two or three, right? Or is it one or two? That, you would know, not us. That's know. why we're asking yeah. you. The one I went on had two. I think a three humped camel would be rare. Yeah. Mm. I feel like. It's nice. like a dinosaur at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Camels are terrifying. 
I told you the story. They were, the, the thing was like screaming at me oh. the whole time I was writing Spit it. Here, right? I saw a video. Yeah, I saw he showed me a video. Just screaming like a, and like, it goes, a, like a child. It goes. The whole time. Like it's on fire. I'm just like, this is like, I was so excited. And then I'm like, I feel bad now. I, I was just crying. Me it was pretty was bad. Crying. Yeah. Um, What's the most exotic animal you guys need? That's a good question. I have to think about it too. Like in the wild, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Not a zoo. Not a zoo. Yeah, zoo doesn't count. Yeah. Uh, Elephant? No, it's a zoo. Oh, for me. I mean, I've seen sure. elephants in the wild. I, I went to Southeast Asia. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah there we go. Um, I went to Southeast Asia, and I was just trying to think of what all the animals I saw. But yeah, I saw some elephants, like some variety of monkeys. Nice. Yeah. I've seen alligators in Florida, like just in the wild, like right. like no barrier, just like it's right it's there. They wanted to come get <laughs> me. I'm fucked. It's in wild. Your backyard. <laughs> yeah, it's terrifying because they just fucking bite you. Like they'll yeah. just run. Up. They're fast too. Even oh. though, yeah, they, they like look little, slow. No, I know, but they they run faster than people. Like if they're going to, to get you, you're fucked, dude. You cannot run a. It's crazy. Just don't call it a crocodile. It will track you down. <laughs> no. Whoa, whoa, oh, unhouse. Like wrong. It's like assuming. The, it's like assuming a right? gender. You know, they get really upset exactly. with that. <laughs> exactly. Did you guys see that video of like he was like a new Floridian and he put the crocodile or alligator into this garbage can? Oh goodness. Oh God. yeah. And he, and he tricked it by he put the garbage flap down and it scared him from behind and then he went in. Oh, and he yeah. was wearing like sandals. I saw that. He but was like I, trying to get the alligator out and he was yeah. like tricking it to go. Oh, wow. And they're like, he only did it because he'd never lived in Florida before. So he didn't know the danger. <laughs> but it worked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they always say, like, with those animals, like those uh, crocodiles, lions, whatever, yeah. bears, and, and like they, they get freaked out because we're freaked out. We're like, ah! And they're like, ah! And they fucking right. kill them. But if you kind of just cool, you're like, you know what? It's not a big deal. I'm not scared. I'm just going to go our separate ways. That makes sense. They won't attack. I you. once had my food stolen by a monkey. What yeah, is this? I so my grandparents have a house in India, mm. and you see a lot of weird creatures and um, <laughs> monkey. like cows go in ins- inside and outside your house. You can't do anything; they're sacred. Mm. Cows, and then, yeah, love cows. What and happens if you kill a cow in India? Mm. You go to jail. Big deal, right? Big stuff happens. <laughs> you could get like killed, and then you like everybody killed. will look the other way. You know, they'll be like, oh, "Yeah, he just Ser- seriously, die. yeah, burn him." It's a witch. It's like killing a person. Um, <laughs> a <witch>. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know, but. It was funny because like we were eating food and we decided to eat food. Sometimes we eat it on the floor, so inside or outside doesn't right. matter. We're gonna eat outside, and with your hands. And yeah, with our hands I and love stuff. It. And like I had my little tin and my food on it, and then my grandmother was like, "Okay, like don't leave your food, or else the monkeys are gonna get them." And like I don't see any monkeys anywhere, yeah. so I was like. You're crazy. Like, what do you mean you, the buggies are going to get them? Like, you bugging grandma. You bugging grandma. She's speaking in English or do you also speak her language? She, spe- she speaks pretty good English. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, she, she, like, but she's still, like, is broken English, but it's mm-hmm. like, you know, I can understand. Can, do you speak the... No, I only know, like, all the bad words. Like, the, the stuff words. I grew up with. Okay. <laughs> and there's a lot of dialects, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They speak Hindi. Hindi. Um, but... I was like, yeah, right, grandma. And I like, went in to just get a cup of water real quick. And I just took three steps away from it. And I like looked behind me just to, like, uh-huh. you know, just to, like, I don't know, a hunch told me to. A monkey out of I didn't see it anywhere. It just came out and took it. <laughs> oh, my God. Took my food. Took the whole tin. What's the New York equivalent? Probably Pizza a rat. pigeon, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, Somebody taking your bike. Oh, oh, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that would be that person would be, taking your bike. <laughs> yeah. I know we're talking about bikes a lot, but I had my bike stolen outside my building and they took off the front tire and I was just too depressed to oh, take it off the God. hook. And I just watched it get piece by piece. They took it off. <laughs> and every day I walked oh, out and brutal. I go, why don't I take this? And then it was only till it was to the base. That's so the funny. Frame, the yeah, the frame, frame, the frame. It's like crows eating a carcass yeah. on the road. Just it's it's fucked up. Different <laughs> that's messed up. Oh, that's no. So but yeah, that's New York, I guess. Yeah, you got to be. I mean, I don't know your roommate situation, but you can't be having the, the door open in New York. That's a. <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, if something happens and you tell the cops, like, yeah, we, you know, sometimes right. we leave the front door open, they're like, all right, dude, well, I mean, yeah. we're not. We're out of here. Report's that, finished. That's on you, dude. Finished and signed. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, I've been meaning to get, like, insurance for, like, some of my cameras and stuff. Oh, dude, if you have a lot of, then if I'm you have like, expensive stuff in there, yeah. yeah. I should just, maybe I should make him pay for my insurance. What's, what's, his, what's his deal? What the, is he a hippie? Like, what's going on with, with uh, the leaving the door open? He, I think he's a guy. For, yeah. <laughs> hey, man. It's all uh, stuff, dude. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. We're going. <laughs> We're going to hell anyways, man. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. He doesn't like carrying around keys. I guess. Oh He's gotta, God! 
What a terrible! I'm sure he's got like ounces of like weed on yeah, him. He, makes, he can't he carry makes keys. Up for it. Yeah, he makes up for it. He's entertaining. <laughs> Dang. Interesting. That's scary. <laughs> I have a I have a doorman, so sometimes I don't Fancy. walk out with keys. Whoa. But I need I need to preface the doorman situation with I moved in 2020. Yeah. And I got lucky. It turned out to be rent stabilized in good. New York, which I didn't know Very good. going in. That's the best. You, you never s- know going yeah. in. It's kind of weird. I started hearing these stories of like people in the West Village, like my rent is triple. It's like move. And yeah. then I was like, what's going to happen to me? Yeah. And they just raised it like the max 3% or whatever. Maybe that's what we have. Are we rent stable? No, ours no. Our, up- our landlord is just really nice. It's not, it's not uh, rent stable. Ours only went up 100 It's better, bucks. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, he not he's uh we we're a good thing because he's like uh, some of these landlords are just sharks. Yeah, so they're just trying yeah. to suck money. Like I'm sure if they had someone a shark had this unit, I mean there would be 18 people living here right now. There'd be a, a bed there, <laughs> a bed there, a bed there, a bed there. But our landlord, I think he's just really he's old, old. You know, he's barely. He lives here too in the building. No, 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 no. no. But he um, every time I talk to him, it's just he's like bad. it's a lot. Of, huh? Yeah. What language barrier for sure? Yeah, yeah. So I think he just wants. To Whatever he can get. I, yeah, I think he just wants people he can trust. That's yeah. kind of nice. For sure. He can't yeah. No, I, my, my first my first place was in Upper East Side, and it was a pre-war building, and um, the landlord owned the hair salon under my building. Oh, okay. Nice. And, like, I just took him, you know, a written-down check, uh, paper check every month. He let me, like, go month to month after my lease was up while I looked for a new apartment. That's like, great. Such a chill guy. Yeah, Super yeah, Super nice. Yeah. Um, and now I'm in a building with like a actual management company and it's like oh, cutthroat, no. dude. It's cutthroat. Yeah. Was there a Raising salon discount? <laughs> get it. You know, I didn't take him up on that. Oh, come on. Dude. Get the, get dude, the where do you get your haircut? I know we already talked about it, but I, I, I'm still kind of in between. I used to get, I used to go to this guy, um, for like the first 10 years of my life back in Jersey. Mm-hmm. And then when I moved to New York, I kept going back to him when I wanted a haircut. But I, it just became too much. So I just, yeah. now I'm letting it grow. And there's. To cross the Hudson for a haircut. Yeah, for a haircut, it's a little bit much. And then, um, but there's a hair salon. Right here, and there's this nice lady that she's, uh, she cuts it, you know. And I, I gotta get it trimmed. So I still don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if it's like too long or what's the deal or. Should have any thoughts? Yeah, she, <laughs> she, she might as well know that. I wanna braid it. <laughs> oh, I think the recorder stopped. What? Stop there. Oh, it's Is it full? That's like, it's like you guys have said enough. Oh, it's, it's full. Well, let's talk about your hair. The things like fall. All right, no, one more time. No. One more time. Tell us the name of your show and the location. And your Instagrams, everything. The name, of, the name of the show is I Think You Should Know. I Think You Should Know! Yeah. Our first guest, me and Jeff Wright, and hopefully our goal, our last guest, will be Alanis Morissette. Oh, shit. She'll perform You Ought to Know yeah. on I Think You Should Know. The first cool. show is this Saturday, February 11th, in the East Village. Doors open at uh, 3 p.m. Show will start promptly at 3.30, so get there. We'll be selling drinks. Mm. Get your drink on. Drink on Saturday night. Um, yeah, sa- this Saturday. Yeah, the guy, the guy bartending, his Instagram is called Wet Chemistry. Wet Chemistry. I like that. And he's doing mezcal and the girlies. Nice. Ooh. I know you know how to make those. You were a bartender. That's right. I or you Cosmo are? Stone, you... Okay, not anymore. No. I can make a Cosmo, and that's it. No, that's not true. He can make everything. He made a Paloma, too. Listen. All right, go watch. Is it every week? Do you do it every week? Well, well they're, they're just doing the first one now. Okay, it's, see. it's got they gotta go um, in person. Did, did you get the address? Out? Did you get the address? Out? Uh, yeah, the address is seventy seven East Third Street. Yeah. in East Village. So Third Street between First and Second Ave. Ticket, 3 p.m. Tickets at the door. Um, all right, guys, thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, please go check them out, and then uh, you know catch up on the old Mixed Must episodes if you can. Um, Shivani, any last words? No. Nah. Hey, I better be in the VIP section. No doubt. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll help you at the door. <laughs> <laughs> like five bucks. <laughs> Buy like a quarter of a sandwich instead. Uh, thank you for having us. All right, that's it. Yeah. Anywhere to your left is going to be, you might start getting off camera. Yeah. Other than that, I feel like good to go. You give me your mic, I give you a mic.